Hey everybody and welcome to the video. This is Josh here and today we're going to be taking a look at how I edit my landscape photos in Lightroom. Uh, more specifically, a photo I took recently at Multnomah Falls here in Oregon. It's a very popular landmark for any tourists, but uh, the photo came out really great. So I thought it would make a great example for showing you kind of the process that I take in Lightroom to edit my photos. Starting off, I have the finished edit here so you can kind of take a look at where we're going to end up but I'm gonna go ahead and get this reset so you can see the original image here. Uh, we have a bunch of crowd in the background. It's a little blown out up here, but overall we have uh, a really nice starting image to work with. I know I've talked about it before. I'm relatively new to photography, but my background is actually in graphic design. So I went to college and learned photo retouching and editing. Uh, so I do have quite a few years of experience doing this. It's definitely helped and you know, we can do a lot in the the edit especially when you're a new photographer um, but so starting off here I always like to take care of the crop and composition first um, I tend to focus in on the 4 by 5 aspect ratio uh, most of these are just gonna end up on Instagram for me uh, I don't do a ton else with them for commercial use or anything so I tend to like to focus in and take shots with that 4 by 5 crop in mind especially if I know it's gonna be for Instagram uh, so we've got that crop here I'm gonna pull this in to get that light post out of the way and um, and then kind of get this lined up here want to make sure and remove this light post and we want to remove the crowd and I also um, really heavily rely on this rule of thirds grid in a lot of my composition so you can see here the uh, the bottom third there is lining up really well with that famous bridge um, so there is that we've got it straightened up with the bridge here we've got the nice waterfall in this third we've got the trees up here in that third um, nice and balanced I'm a really really big fan of how this came out and I got really lucky catching this uh, this fog here that day all right so we've got our crop done here first off um, I am going to actually pull down the color temperature just a bit I tend to prefer a little bit of a cooler image um, especially in Instagram things are gonna be a little bit more stylized um, yep so I pulled down that white balance there a bit and um, overall I mean things are looking pretty good I'm gonna try and pull these highlights down here I don't tend to do a lot in these main slider bars here um, I do a lot of this work down in the tone curve but we're gonna get to that in a second um, one thing I do tend to do for most of my Instagram photos is I'll pull this vibrancy way down um, just gives a little more of a muted moody look um, especially with the fog I think it's just nice and dramatic and it just adds that drama to have that um, lower saturation and lower vibrance look so I'm just gonna raise up the blacks a bit here with um, with the tone curve and then pull down those mids and you can see the histogram is um, is overlaid here so you can kind of see where we're falling with our different exposures so I'm gonna pull down those those low mids there and then make another control point here and kind of pull that back up as you can see that's gonna add some good contrast and um, yeah just kind of makes everything pop a little bit more I think and then you can see everything is looking pretty good here. I'm gonna bounce back up here. This is something I will use the sliders if need be, kind of after I take care of my tone curve. That's always the priority when I'm getting the, the different exposures set up. Um, so I pulled up those shadows a bit. I think that looks pretty nice going from there. And then moving along, we've got the HSL sliders. Um, I don't do anything too crazy, but I do a little bit of color manipulation in most of my photos. Um, especially here, what uh, something I really like to do for these moody, foggy shots is um, because I have that cooler color temperature, you have a lot of blues up here in the highlights. Um, so I'm actually gonna take the blue and kind of pull it just a little bit into that that kind of aqua teal color um, I think that looks really nice and that orange and teal those colors are really nice and complimentary and trendy right now on Instagram 
Um, so I pulled that a little bit, but there's not really much else. I tend to pull the greens a little bit towards the blue as well. I'm also gonna pull the yellows just a little bit towards the orange side. So like I said, we have that teal and, and orange kind of subtlety baked into the picture. Moving over to the saturation, um, definitely wanna tone these greens down quite a bit. Um, lowering down those mids too will increase the saturation. So pulling that down just kind of helps balance that out. And, and that is the key with a lot of these stylized edits. Subtlety is your friend. And the second you start to notice you've probably gone a bit too far. Um, we all get kind of caught up in uh, new features or styles or techniques and we tend to be a bit heavy handed in the earlier stages, but you really want to practice restraint and subtlety when, um, when you're editing these landscape photos. So I'm just gonna pull those greens down a bit and um, from a saturation standpoint, I'm thinking that looks really nice how it is. Um, going over to the luminance here, I also like to pull down that luminance just a hair on the green, um, just kinda help subdue it a bit more. And, um, and let's see here, I'm gonna see what looks like with a little bit of those blues. And yeah, pulling down that luminance in the blue is gonna bring out a little bit more of that highlight information, that detail up here. And one other thing I like to do when you have these really high contrast scenes with the, the dark, dark forest down here and the bright, bright sky, I'm gonna do a graduated filter just kind of really lightly across that whole area there. And um, you can see by default it's raised up a little bit, but we're going to actually get this reset let's set those back down to zero let's pull down the saturation just a bit see not very much but it really is going to um, to even out that exposure and that image a little bit more um, so yeah just about a half stop down on that whole sky from a graduated filter and this is one other new trick I learned recently from Thomas Heaton um, he is a landscape photographer that is far more qualified than I am you should go check his channel out if you haven't already he's amazing I've been obsessed but, um, but there's something called a range mask that you can do. I had never even noticed this, um, but essentially you can take that graduated filter where we're bumping everything down by half a stop and essentially adjust what luminance values are being affected by that mask. Um, and generally we're doing this, so we can pull those highlights down. Um, so if we just restrict that mask to the highlights, it's going to keep everything else from over darkening. So I'm just gonna show as an example here with pulling that slider. Um, we're darkening up all of these darker areas here. But if we pull this back up, we're not gonna be affecting those lower luminance values quite as much. So all we will really be affecting is this upper sky and those lighter areas in the fog. We've got all of our colors finished here. I don't tend to do anything with the sharpening or the clarity. I like having these nice kind of soft, subtle, sharp images. Um, I'm not a big fan of that crazy clarity slider HDR sort of look, so nice and soft and moody and dramatic. And from there we are going to get our lens corrections and uh, moving on down here. Uh, when these images are very, very dark like this, just to add to a little bit of that moodiness, I'm gonna put a really slight vignette around and then just feather that out a bit more so it's a little bit less noticeable but yeah i just think that adds a really nice touch there all right and last step we have one of my favorite tools for these moody dramatic landscapes and that is the dehaze but i'm actually going to use it to haze up the image we already have this fog in place so we kind of have that natural ethereal look already i'm going to add just a little bit of haze to accentuate that so you can see again you want really really subtle subtle shifts if you do too much it's going to look silly but yeah just that little bit of haze there just adds to that ethereal foggy look and i'm a really big fan of that style and i'll uh, i'll go back here and reset it just for comparison so you can see that haze and back to zero just a little bit more crunchy that way i i like that softer hazy look you know i had tested a while back a few different variations where i was removing these people off the bridge but i felt like it really took away from the scale of that giant majestic waterfall behind them so we're just going to leave them back in there today 
but that is it for me I, I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing some of the behind the scenes workflow of how I edit these photos I always love doing this so I'm more than happy to share hopefully you got some benefit or learned a new trick or two uh, definitely check out Thomas Heaton if you haven't already but uh, thank you all so much for watching and until next time I'll talk to you all later have a good one <laughs>